So I got a comment recently asking for some help with a siege defense. 500 Sturgeon Shieldy boys defending against horseless horse riders. This should be a wrap. So I quickly loaded up and mounted the walls. We've got three Onager to their one siege ram, which means we'll be picking off their troops in large numbers, destroying the ram when it comes into range, and force the enemy up the four ladders. What I failed to take into account was how stupid the AI is, like destroying our own fortifications, opening up our infantry to shots from enemy archers. No worries, it's two versus 100 every couple of seconds on these ladders. It's still not a very difficult defense. And then our own Onager lobbed a salvo right into our tightly packed defenders. I love the Bannerlord AI. I let this run at 1x speed just to make sure the results were legit. But a couple interesting things happened that I wanted to point out. Since the AI changed in 1.9 and 1.0 full release, siege defense is much harder. The AI gives the attackers plenty of space to fight rather than pushing in as a huge mob like before, allowing more attacking troops onto the walls. I also didn't take stock of our archers versus the enemy archers. Not a single one of our archers were left halfway through the fight. In the end, the kills on both sides were essentially even, which means we got spanked. No wonder he asked for help. This is no walk in the park. First off, let's go over the easiest solution, just so you don't think this was clickbait. With a single click, we can win this siege defense and send the defenders packing. Send troops allows us to use the defensive bonuses of being the defender during a siege, which generally allows us to win a 2 to 1 numbers disadvantage. In this case, it's slightly more, but we also have higher tier troops in our garrisons so that helps a bit. It's about as thin a margin of victory as you can get. 38 survivors of a nearly 1600 unit battle. One benefit of auto-resolving battles like this is higher injury rates and more prisoners. However, if you prefer to take destiny into your own hands or just hate using auto-resolve, then I found another solution. First, we need to split troops into four groups, two infantry and two archer groups. There's no need to use filters here, so remove those, split them into 50-50 for both infantry and archers. The plan here is to hold a vigorous defense on the interior of the walls. Since the enemy will filter in slowly, we should have local superiority at all times. More importantly, by abandoning the walls, we avoid being picked apart by the enemy archers, which we already know massively overpower us. One infantry formation is placed to the rear of the castle, acting as a fallback line. The other infantry formation is placed at the front gates, but not the way that you would expect. We want the door to be wide open for the enemy to stream in, but also give our archers plenty of angles to get shots off. There are two places for our archers here and we angle them in such a way that more of them can shoot than if it was a perpendicular line. Loose formation doesn't work here because formations are messed up in sieges. Be sure to take archers off of scatter or they will run to the walls no matter where we place them pre-battle. In this case, we use line formation. Now we pull some reverse psychology on the enemy. We open both gates wide open and welcome them in. Ah! It doesn't change much now because they still have a ram and may not believe us, but it does allow us to get some good Onager shots off on them. Like before, the targeting automatically switches to the ram once in range and it goes down without much issue. However, because the front gate is wide open, the enemy decides to take advantage of the situation, sends a wave of the top tier troops down the middle. Welcome gentlemen, come right in. They peel off to our left and engage the infantry, but also expose their flanks to archers and our massive two-handed axe. And because we most Mostly attack troops who are already engaged in combat, it's easy pickings. With the first wave destroyed, we can head back up the walls to see what's coming next. It's more top tier troops coming straight down the middle. While it's a safer way to go than the ladders, maybe taking all three routes would be better. The second wave ends in much the same as the first. At this point, we have 329 kills to their 86, which is roughly 4 to 1. We need to maintain a minimum of a little over 2 to 1 to win, so it helps to keep tabs on that throughout the battle and make adjustments accordingly. While we deal with more waves, let's chat about one of the most important aspects to making this strategy work. We need to stay alive with our main character. If we go down at any point in time, the battle is over. Our troops will make a mad dash toward the enemy and sacrifice themselves in the name of a glorious death in battle. It took me several attempts to make this siege defense work, and it's actually impossible to do if our main character goes down early. Okay, finally the enemy has caught on. They're pushing all three lanes of offense now, and we'll mount the walls. We cannot defend from three angles, so we strategically move back each group, starting with the archers. They have not yet reached the walls, so we leave them to help with this final wave. Now we've ordered a full retreat and move back. 
Fighting on a single front is much more preferable than three. However, the archers cannot shoot over the heads of the infantry, so we move them to the walls and hope they don't get rushed by the enemy infantry. This castle has two tiers of walls, which is ideal for more damage output. They do start to push the walls, so we hop in to help out. At this stage of the battle, our hit points are low enough to warrant switching to one-handed mace with a shield. We need to keep our archers alive as long as possible. So at worst, we become a mobile shield, and at best, we take people out with a mace. It seems like the AI is cycling between attacking and retreating for some reason, so we keep moving to where they attack. It's a tough battle, slowly getting whittled down. If we don't help defend, we lose our archers and probably the whole battle. If we lower our shield to help fight, we risk going down and losing everything. And of course, the inevitable happens. I stop taking my own advice and get destroyed by this shield sister. Wow, she was quick to the first hit. Well played. At this point, the battle is 828 to 356, which is still enough to win, but it's a very thin margin. It actually looks like we might have this one in the bag, and then this happened. I've seen people get launched before, but this guy takes the cake. In the end, we come up short. The enemy is left with 42 troops. We'll redo the battle and win it. But to break the tension, I just want to say kudos to Turin for hooking his tiny son up with this massive lady. Can't wait to see the betting ceremony on this one. We go with the exact same setup. One infantry in the rear as backup, one guarding the main entrance, and both archer lines at different angles covering the main gate. The ram goes down and they send waves through the main gate. We smash them with our axe and shoot them in the back while our shield wall holds them in place. Let's fast forward up to the point where they order an all out assault. This time a large contingent runs after our first group of archers, so we swing into action to slash them. Keeping the archers alive is key to victory in most sieges, so do whatever it takes. Taking some damage is unavoidable, but care must be taken to minimize it while still having a significant impact on the end result. Once the group attacking our archers has been dealt with, we move the archers to the back. I started to move the archers back to their original spot because it looked as though the enemy gave up on scaling the walls. But then they started coming over the top so I backed them up once more. The AI can do erratic things, so try to stay on your toes. I had planned on moving them all the way back, but they're coming in slow enough that we can still keep up. Taking the front line, we bring out the shield to draw aggro and slow down how many reach our shield wall at any given time. The archers don't take any damage, but the shield's wall will, and get whittled down over time, so the focus shifts to their well-being. Now the enemy is streaming in from our left side, but they're bottlenecked by the stairs and can fit two to three troops at once max. It shouldn't be hard to hold that while the archers in the rear pick them off. The plan was to consolidate the infantry shield wall slightly further back, but they move really far back and now the archers are being targeted hard. Once again, the shield comes out and we play the body blocker. One thing to keep in mind, siege defenses favor the archers for long battles because the AI never runs out of ammo and can shoot infinite arrows even without going to arrow barrels. So keeping them alive and in position to continue raining death from above is critical. At long last, the enemy has broken and flees. The battle ends with 204 out of the original 500 from the start. Out of 1,078 kills to 328 losses, it's much better than the 1 to 1 ratio from trying to hold the walls. Before we do a final recap, let's talk about one tip. When fighting with the garrison and militia units, many nobles will be thrown in the dungeon automatically. Be sure to check the dungeon after battle and take them into your party. Instead of having a single noble, we now have 10. Now we can execute them, ransom them off for cash, or donate them to another allied clan's fief for relations and influence gain. If the goal is to keep nobles off the battlefield, donating them to another noble's fief is a great way of doing it. Let's cover the most important points from this video. When fighting defensive sieges, always assess the enemy's strengths and weaknesses. In this case, they have overwhelming archer superiority and overall number superiority, but quality of infantry was comparable. This means we had to abandon the walls to have have any chance of survival, taking their archers completely out of the equation. If we had archer superiority, this video would be completely different. Archers have infinite supply of arrows, so placing them in safe places where they can continuously shoot at the enemy is key. If they aren't on the walls, then consider setting up a melee clash where the archers can shoot into the enemy flanks. Siege defenses don't have to be static battles. Having plans to fight where you hold all the advantages is important, but also recognize that things change and the advantages can flip-flop. Falling back isn't only for cowards, but those who want to win. Even if you follow all these steps perfectly, 
None of it will matter if the player goes down, since the AI follows the Sun Tzu method, F1, F3. Staying alive should be placed above all else, no matter what. And finally, don't hesitate to use auto resolve for siege defenses. In this case, the main character had a whopping 18 levels of tactics. Not exactly a Napoleon but still won the battle. The math is heavily in the defender's favor, although the results may not be quite as good as fighting it in person. I've uploaded the full final battle in case anybody wants to watch start to finish. I wasn't able to do voiceover since, as you can tell, I sound like a 90-year-old librarian who smokes four packs of cigarettes a day, and it's quite painful to talk right now. You can click here to see it if you wish. Thank you to all the YouTube members and Patreon supporters who help the channel out financially. I really appreciate your help. Be sure to... <clears throat> be sure... So I got a comment. <laughs> 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 <laughs>